Hey everyone, and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Thanks for joining us today. Quick disclaimer before we move on, none of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read the disclaimer in its entirety before moving on. Channel plug, here at Whiteboard Doctor, our mission is to bring you interesting, relevant, and understandable medical education for all types of lifelong learners, trainees, and practitioners. If you want to follow along, we do have a lovely subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of all the videos. Don't forget to hit that like button. And lastly, if you'd like to support us outside of viewing our videos, we have several ways in which you can do that linked in the video description and pinned comment. Stay well, keep learning, and back to the video. All right, welcome back, y'all. Today we're going to talk about that we are officially 21 days since our first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. For those of you that have been following along, we got the Pfizer vaccine, the first dose of it, exactly 21 days ago. It was early on in the vaccination push, given our roles in the uh, intensive care unit and emergency department. We were part of the first tier to get vaccinated at our uh, institution. We are now 21 days since then. We covered um, getting the vaccine five days after getting it, uh, or no, 36 hours after getting it, five days after getting it. And now we are 21 days since that first dose. So we wanted to go through any side effects we've experienced, where our immunity's at, and then our next dose, which is actually scheduled for today. All right, after we got the vaccine, we did have mild right shoulder discomfort pain, soreness. We had no skin, uh, overlying skin redness. We had no swelling in the area. We had no systemic symptoms, no fatigue, no headaches, no myalgias, nothing like that. We just had that mild soreness in the shoulder. We took 600 milligrams of ibuprofen. Soreness went away, took another 600 milligrams the next morning, and we actually had felt completely fine since then, had no issues at all. Some of our colleagues did have more significant soreness in that right shoulder. We talked about the increased uh, reactogenicity of this vaccine, but otherwise no side effects. Where are we at in our kind of immunity here? Well, the caveat to this figure is that the studies done looking at true immunity, like the studies on the thousands of people, did not start looking until seven days after the second dose. So when we talk about that, you know, 90%, 95% efficacy, that was seven days after the second dose dose. So this is just a, um, a figure that they published just looking at a handful of participants and the incidence of COVID-19 based on days after first dose. So this would be, you know, day zero is when you got the first dose. And what they zoomed in on here is that at about day, you know, 11 or so, you really got this decrease in incidence of COVID-19 as compared to the placebo. So you really had a drop in incidence of COVID-19 after day about 11. We're at day 21 now, right? So we are here. And although you should always continue with your social distancing, masking, and precautions, given that we don't know the incidence of asymptomatic um, infection where you could spread it, there is a quite a low incidence of getting COVID-19 at this point, even though we haven't gotten that second dose. All right. As for the side effects, we do expect the side effects to be worse after that second dose. So here's a figure from the New England Journal of Medicine study on the Pfizer vaccine, and they ended up using the 30 microgram dose. So this is dose one and dose two, 18 to 55 years old, which is about where we are. And what you can see here is that for dose two, at the 30 microgram dose, actually 100% of people got soreness in the arm. Similar to after the first dose, we are part of that 100%. That's pretty typical for a vaccine, right? You can see that some people got redness at the injection site. About the same number did, but there's more moderate redness at the injection site. And you can see that a number of people got um, swelling at that 30 milligrams after dose one. At dose two, a little bit more higher incidence of swelling um, with a few more that are moderate, which is this blue, as compared to the green, which is mild. So after the second dose, we do expect, right, more soreness, and we expect possibly some redness or swelling. All right. Here, 
we have the same thing just in the older population. Um, and you can actually see that in the 65 to 85 year old population, instead of 100%, there was 92% who got pain and 75% that got pain. So there was actually a lower incidence of um, pain at the injection site after the second dose in the older group um, compared to the younger group, which is interesting to think about. You know, they're tougher. They're a tougher generation than us younglings. Um, okay, so what do we expect in terms of systemic symptoms? And that's what we have here. So you can see that after the first dose, 18, or, uh, 18 to 55 years after the first dose, dose one, at 30 micrograms, very few people got fevers. There was a higher incidence, almost 50% that got fatigue at that 30 microgram dose and 58% that got chills. We didn't get any of those. But if we go over to dose two, you can see that at the 30 microgram dose, almost 75% of people got a fever. And a good number of those fevers were kind of greater than 38.4 degrees Celsius. A really good number got fatigue, 83%. And a really good number got chills, 67%. So we do expect that we probably will get some of these systemic um, side effects after this second dose, because we do see increased side effects, SE, after the second dose. So why might that be? Well, before we talk about that, let's just talk about um, the older age group, which again, you can see they actually have less systemic symptoms than the younger group, although even they see an increase, 25% fevers, 33% fevers, right? We see 44% fatigue, 67% fatigue, 17% chills, 33% chills. So even the older group has increased systemic symptoms. So why do we see increased side effects and systemic symptoms and local symptoms after the second dose? Well, we actually talked about this in a previous video. We're going to link in this video's description, our mRNA um, and COVID-19 vaccine playlist. Check that out. There's, I think at this point, probably about a dozen great videos talking about all things mRNA and COVID-19 vaccines. But the way this vaccine is structured is there's mRNA, which will be yellow here, surrounded by a lipid nanoparticle layer. And when they do studies, this lipid nanoparticle protects the mRNA from degradation. It helps get it into the cell, but it is immunogenic, meaning that our immune system does react to it a bit. And what we see is if you just were to inject this lipid nanoparticle layer into, you know, an animal, you would get some immune response, even without the mRNA. So the thought is that this vaccine compared to, you know, typical traditional vaccines is a little more reactogenic because that lipid nanoparticle layer that helps the vaccine, the mRNA get into cells, helps protect it from degradation, does stimulate a little bit of an immune response to it. Nothing significant, transient, you know, just lasts, you know, 24 to 48 hours, if not less. Um, but that is probably why we start to see um, um, a kind of a higher acute side effect profile. So that's to be expected and not to be a surprise. All right. So we are going to go get our second dose of the vaccine. Um, we then will give you some updates about how we're feeling after the second dose, um, any you know side effects we're having, adverse effects we're having, any experiences that our colleagues are having, and then we'll go through some of kind of the immunity and immune response that uh, we should be expecting to, to be going on in our body in those follow-up videos. So again, check out our COVID-19 vaccination playlist. Lots of good videos in there as well. If you liked this video, give us a like. If you want to follow along, hit subscribe. Stay well, and we'll see you all next time.